Do you ever feel stuck, like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. I am Sharon Lecter, your host. And I have a returning guest today because I think she's fantastic. And she has a new book. Barbara Majeski, thank you so much for coming back. Yes, I'm so excited. I was like giving birth this book. <laughs> <laughs> well, Barbara, you um is you've probably seen her before on the podcast, but she is a lifestyle expert. She's been through amazing things in her life some that you could only dream of, others that you would never want to have happen to you. She's had the highest highs and the lowest lows, and um, she's taken her experience and made an impact on so many other people. Her book is called Sabotage to Success, and it just came in this week, so this is her very first interview, I think, and I'm excited to be the one to do it because we've been friends for a while and been working together to really take her brand to where it deserves to be. So Barbara, thanks for being here. Yes, and thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking about this. This was on the list and now I can check it off, so. Yep, and she had a ton of people that pre-ordered the book that she's getting the books out to them. So it's, you know, there's nothing quite like opening that box the first time for the first book. You know, it still hasn't gotten old. I've had 28 books, but seeing it for the first time, that actual manuscript to know that uh, the project has come to that point of culmination is pretty exciting. It's it's so exciting. And what's so funny over on my bulletin board over here, I ha I, I drew it out. Um, and it's really funny because I can't draw well. But I'm very big on, um, you know, journaling, writing things down, getting things out of your creative side of your brain and using the analytical side by grabbing the pen, getting off the phones, grabbing markers, colored pencils, crayons. I don't care. But so I drew the cover of my book and it's really funny. I I don't know if my my artistry is better than the real life one, but it's pretty close. <laughs> hold, hold it up so we can see it because this yeah. is pretty exciting. Sabotage to Success. Read me the subtitle. So it's Sabotage to Success, Rising from the Ashes of Cancer and Divorce, How to Embrace Life's Second Chances. Yes, exactly. And you have been, you know, it's a, you've had an amazing journey and you have um, had to deal with stage three, stage four cancer at the same time you were dealing with a divorce. So the emotional upheaval had to have been huge. Plus, you're the mother of three beautiful children. So it's been a, quite a journey. Somebody looks at you and you look perfect. I, when we first started working together, I said you kind of had the Barbie complex. People think, oh, life is easy for her because she's so beautiful. But uh, by sharing your story, you're opening up the world to understand things that different change. So talk about the idea behind the book. You know, the idea behind the book was when I started going on television. So after I battled cancer, I kind of have the, had this new lease on life of like, I, I want to leave nothing left on this table. I want to feast from the smorgasbord. And television was always something that kept going across like my motherboard. Like I'd love to be on TV, but I would talk myself out of any taking any initiative. I took no initiative because I told myself I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't short enough. I was, I had all the, anything I could rip myself to shreds. And so I never even got out of the gate. Like before I even showed up to the sport of life, I was already benching myself. Nobody benched me. I benched me. But what ended up 
being so fascinating. So people, I was sharing like my journey on social media and people were like, oh my God, I just saw you on the Today Show. Like, how did you do that? So they weren't like, like, oh, tell me more about the like easy bake oven that you have on, on television or that you're featuring for the Super Bowl, this, that, the other thing. They were like, how'd you do that? And I kept answering it, but not answering it the right way. In my own opinion, I would give them a simple answer of like, oh, I hired a media trainer. And my heart was like, you're not helping them. You're getting them to spend more money. And I realized there's so much more in living in pursuit of your highest expression of you. And it's not just about buying Pelotons, buying another weight loss app to lose weight, buying another, you know, app to learn how to play the guitar. It's not so much that people need more, like to buy more things. People need to have the discipline to do the things you need to do to get the things that you want and figure out what the landscape is between the ears. So I started to kind of think about like, I can't just in one setting say like, well, these are some things I had to work on. Like, I thought I'd write a book and be like, I want you to read this and think about ways that maybe that you need to break through some limiting beliefs so you can do what you need to do. And I'll tell you what, Sharon, people started putting their art in art shows, um, going to law school, um, you know, getting into getting into relationships. Like people just thought it was so cool. They were like, because I saw you do it. I was like, well, why can't I do it? Like all of a sudden I just gave people this permission of like, well, if she can do that, I can do that. And I found it so rewarding. And that's why I write, wrote the book is like, I want to see more people be like, if she can do it, I can do this. I can fly a plane. I can lose the weight. I can get in shape. I can, you know, find the man of my dreams, the woman of my dreams, the life of my dreams. And it's just, I love those. Do you love those stories, Sharon? Absolutely. And you've been gathering them and you've had so many people, You, in addition to writing the book, you've been hosting challenges. And I love, I mean, you keep it so simple and yet you keep people motivated to keep them moving forward. Water, writing and walking, right? The three W's. <laughs> And, um, and you just, you encourage people to, to live their best life. And I think that's so many of us were so caught up in the busyness of life or in the drama. And what you, what you just said is what's happening between your two ears that you have to really focus on. Your thoughts are so powerful because they do, your thoughts become things, they become your destiny and really having that clarity of mind to realize what's going on in your mind. Um, sometimes takes a breakthrough, like a breakdown, I would say like a real breakdown. Mine happened. I'm dying of cancer. I'm like, I don't even know if I'm going to survive. Um, but I, what I try to do is, you know, encourage people not wait till they're confronted with their own mortality before they start saying yes to the things that light them up and no to the things that don't surrounding themselves with people that inspire them, taking the chances, booking the trip, showing up, you know, investing money, not spending money. I mean, there's just so many things people can make better choices of that I think we get stuck in ruts. And, I, you know, I just have this great story to share this morning because I think it's, or maybe it's the afternoon. I don't know. So we're in two different time zones. So I have this friend and um, I follow her on social media and she's a big advocate of the Jewish community and she's not Jewish. And I'm very grateful for that. But here's the story. She was married to somebody and it wasn't a great, wasn't great. Um, They're both wonderful people. And I stayed, stayed in touch with them, but she had affections for other women and she like struggled with it, struggled with it, struggled. And when she left her husband to get married to another woman, um, it was like, fallout central. Like everyone had opinions. Everybody had opinions. And she took it on the chin. Like I'm telling you, people stopped talking to her. She was the talk of the town. It was like really not good. It, and she had three kids. And I'm just watching this going, wow, this, this is like, I would send notes here and there, but I wasn't going through what she was going through. I can only be like support. She's on the other side and I, like, you know, it's like, I see her on the other side. She's so damn happy. 
She's so damn happy and living a great life. She's in a great marriage. They have a child together. So it's like unbelievable. And I think the takeaway in live, hearing other people's stories and watching them not get taken down by that's not that's not the societal box you're supposed to be checking and deciding I'm not going to check that box. I'm going to check the box that aligns with my life experience and the things that bring me joy. And this woman brings me joy. And they're happy. The ex-husband to every it's like like so empowering as a person who just loves seeing other people happy. And the reason I share this is because sometimes I don't think we realize we're holding ourselves to societal constructs that have, that are completely not in alignment with what brings us joy. And I think the more you see people step outside social constructs that don't align with them and then like really live their best life, it can give us authority or give us permission to be like, it's okay. Like, go do your thing. Like, I got a divorce. Like, did, uh, oh, oh, she got a divorce. I was so worried about people judging me. People are going to judge you, no matter what you do. Give them something to judge you about. That as long as you're operating from the highest expression of who you are, you're going to be okay. That's what I learned from her was like watching her. I don't know if this is translated, but watching her travel this really hard road it was hard because it was so wow out of the box you know like what you know and now to see her so happy I'm like sometimes you gotta go through what you gotta go through to get to who you're to your yeah, as you said have a breakdown so you can have a breakthrough right and discover the next best chapter and that's something that's you know I talk about it's too many of us and this was me too for years we judge ourselves through the eyes of others. You know, we, and I kind of switch that now. And I tell people other people's opinion of you is none of your business, right? It's their issue. You, you decide what you want, what you want to create and stand in your own power. And that's something that too many people are so paralyzed by what other people think of them. And then because you know what? It's hard, Sharon. It's hard to be judged. It's hard to not be approved, like to garner other people's approval. And whether we like it or not, we have to kind of have a reckoning um, of how much weight does that have in my life? Um, because it does matter. We do want people's approval. So I like it, it's just balancing that. So what I witnessed was her balancing like a lot of disapproval, but find happiness and joy and inspiring other people in the process when it's all said and done. And I think if you ask yourself as you're navigating life's life, as you're lifing, am I hurting anyone or am I making my, am I making good choices? Am I, what, like asking yourself the right questions or am I scared of uh, disappointing other people? You're going to disappoint people. People are going to judge you. People are going to judge you, judge you, judge you. Like, just, just for that judgment's sake, but that's a reflection on the other person and less about you. And you have no control over the way other people judge you. Like you don't control that. So once you let that go, you're going to find out who your real friends are. And I don't know, I just think like just through my book and through watching other people, I know that when you're operating from, you know, your authentic space, you're going to make the better choice and live the better life. And I just want to encourage more people to do that. So you share your journey. You share the things that you did to get to the other side. And in your book, what will people find that will give them that hope and that light ready waiting for them? You know, just, I think one of my favorite lines is by Sophia Bush, which is we're all a work in progress and a masterpiece simultaneously. I think you will see that it's okay to not be perfect, um, and but to be in pursuit of growth and experience and to stay curious, to stay away from judgment and get more into curiosity um, because judgment is only hurting you. It's not hurting that person in the beautiful house, the beautiful car with the beautiful dog. You're, you're judging them. They're still living their best life. 
if I can do anything, help more people, it's to move from judgment to curiosity. Well, how did they get that beautiful car? And how did they get that beautiful life and ask more questions and stay above, you know, sanctimonious, harmful judgment, useless, unproductive judgment, move into curiosity and recognize that we, you know, we're all working and we're all in a growth. If you, if, I want to push more people to be like, stay in a growth mindset, stay curious and recognize we're not supposed to be perfect, that we are a masterpiece. Where we're at is where we're supposed to be, but don't stop growing up, stay curious um, and be okay with just, you know, I don't know, just trying new things. I mean, I, like, that's what I want more people to do is just try new things. And not everything's going to be like, you're going to try something and be like, oh, that wasn't a match. <laughs> So I want you to hold up the book for our viewers and then read the title and the subtitle again for our listeners. Yes. Yeah, so it's Sabotage to Success. My name's Barbara Majeski, and it's Rising from the Ashes of Cancer and Divorce and How to Embrace Life's Second Chances. Life's Second Chances. I love it. And how where, are they, where can they find the book, Barbara? Uh, you can find it on Barnes and Noble and Amazon or go to my website, barbaramajeski.com, where I also have some great stuff that I curated as well um, that I share on television that people just absolutely love as well. And you'll then when they go to the website, they'll find other things like the challenges that you do and the classes that you offer. Yeah. So I offer challenges because, again, like we talked about in the beginning, I love helping people move from information to transformation through action. And I don't think it's lack of information out there as much as it's lack of consistent action. So I help people stay consistent, stay committed and get the results that they want, whether it's their health, their wealth, their happiness. Um, I have got all the tricks and tips and then, uh, then it's just fun to hang out with me and so know, check it. And she's all over social media. So Barbara Majeski, go find her, connect with her. And get her book, Sabotage to Success. You will not regret it. And Barbara's going to hang in there with me to do another um, short video for the um, private Facebook group, Play Big Movement. So if you're not a member of that, please do. But go ahead and rewind and listen to this because you see her energy, her passion, and it's all for helping other people having that next best second chapter of their life. So Barbara, thank you so much for being with me. Absolutely. Thank you. And for all of you watching and listening, thank you so much for being here. This is the end of this episode of the Play Big Movement podcast. I'm Sharon Lecter, your host. And, you know, go out and have a very fun and successful day. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.